if you have already started, then that's already like more than 99%. That's one thing I would repeat my answer to or my you know, follow up for that. That would be make sure that you finish what you start. Welcome to Finding America. I'm on a 13,000 mile road trip to meet Finnish Americans and figure out why they want to be here and learn about cultural differences. You'll meet exciting Finns and hear about their journeys in America. After a long 10 hour drive from Washington DC, we made it to Nashville. We had to make some crucial route decisions and decided not to drive down to Miami for interviews and made our way to my old friend Jukka Baklund. He had some time to take us hiking, we sat in the studio listening to music, and Jukka has actually housed me before in Vegas on a road trip and I might still have his keys to the house. Love this guy, always great to hang out and listen to gems of music and see what kind of music I can find from him. This interview was a lot of fun as you will see. Enjoy. Oh, before we get on with the show, it would mean the world to me and it would help me creating content like this in the future if you could subscribe, smash the like button and maybe share this with a friend. See you next time. Jukka, for people who don't know about you or have never heard that you exist, how would you introduce yourself? I'm a music producer, have been for 20 plus years from Finland, from Helsinki, having been worked with a lot of people in Europe and now thankfully in the last seven years in America. Very happy about it, very hashtag blessed. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> we met maybe like 10, almost 10 years ago now, I would say, yeah. like something like that. So could you tell a little bit of a story of how you came to America? I met Jaakko Manninen in 2013 in, in Los Angeles and we were talking about America and living in America and and what are the benefits and obvious, well, I would say obvious benefits of living in America, especially for a creative. He immediately told me that I should get a lawyer and start applying for a green card, which I immediately did. Yeah, the rest is history. I was living at Yako, mm. Yako's place when you came, and so it was almost like an incubator for friends in a mm. way, except don't only have two incubators for me and you, because the, right. re the rest <laughs> yeah, are yeah, already yeah. back home in Finland. I spend a lot of time in LA before moving here as well. So that that town was, you know, I knew my ways around LA. Mostly I had my base in Vegas and then I just traveled around a lot, but it was a cost efficient way for me to start. I didn't want to put myself in a place where I have to, you know, pay a massive rent or, or have a massive cost per month in a new country where I needed to literally start from zero in every sense. I think that's that was a very beneficial decision to not try to like take too large of a bite financially when when you arrive to America. I think that's a that, that was a good strategy. What was your career like back in Europe? In Finland, I produced a lot of records with with the household names back in Finland and then I worked a bunch in Germany. I got pretty big productions in Germany. In Finland, I felt like I hit a place where I couldn't really reach any further. I was awarded, for example, already for certain things in my career and I, I felt very good about it, but I felt it was very small and the only thing I could do was to try and get that again, like get another award from Finland. It's great, I love it. But in the same time, the curiosity grew on me so much that I needed to see how it is elsewhere. Also, I was living in, in France, I was living in, in Germany. It was great, I felt really like home and it was great, but learning those languages or learning learning those cultures didn't make as much sense to me as, you know, going directly to the source of my musical expression, which obviously I, I was trained in jazz and I always was interested in African-American music very much more than any other type of music, basically. So for me, it was like, why don't I just immigrate to America if I have a chance? Because that's where I find this this source. And for me, that source was super important, like to not only just to locate and know where this stuff comes from, but also try and understand why it is like it is and why why did this music evolve? Not just the school side of it, or you know, uh, like the analysis of that, but like be in be in it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like be yeah. in that. Yeah. You know, surrounded by people of all cultures and yeah. see how it is. Since you've been here for a while, do you have, could you name three pet peeves 
things that really kind of piss you off about America, but you know, we live with them. And I'll give you an example, just so you know, the frame of reference is, for me, it's, you know, people not using the blinker while they change lanes, right. or, mm. uh, you know, you go to a grocery store and you buy items for $10, and then you go to the cashier and it's actually 12 because they added tax to it. And right. So, you know, those are my mm. small issues. Mine would maybe be, if you drive in Oregon, they don't let you fill your own tank. It's actually, the ticket is higher, mm. or I mean, this is what the gas guy said, but the ticket is higher for putting up your own gas in the car, I think it's 1500 bucks, yeah. than doing drugs and getting caught. The credit system, how, how do you get into the credit system that you, you're in this weird place when you're an immigrant where you can't, you don't have any credit, you don't have any credit record, any credit history, but you cannot start really getting any either because it's really difficult to find a way how to get into it. Luckily we are in, we, we live in times right now where we have we have we have tools, we have you know certain companies that offer secured credit cards and, and whatnot. But when I came here there was one and if, if Jaco didn't tell me about that I would still be I would not live in a house that I own. <laughs> let's let's put it this way. Build, starting to build credit as soon as you get here, if, you, if you're planning to immigrate here, that is, is crucial. And nobody tells you, nobody talks about it. What would you say are the main reasons for you wanting to stay here? I was a scholar of American culture, like I said, African-American culture, music. And it still intrigues me, and it will never stop intriguing me. Definitely for me, I feel like, an, as, an, as a self-employed person, I feel like this is a very kind place to a self-employed person. You know, every country has their issues and, you know, bureaucracies, but I find it here in the States, I find it the easiest to, to operate, to run my day-to-day -to -day operations as a music producer, doing my thing, you know, paying my taxes, trying to be a good citizen, all that stuff. Like, all the best cats are here. So, like, I think that's kind of like a no-brainer for a music guy to want to live in the States. Yako actually told me something in the very beginning. He said, you can't be half in, half out. Mm, no, well, not at all. It's just not going to work. Do you have any thoughts on or tips to people who keep doing that? What can they do to just stop that and, and actually... Either or. Stop just traveling to New York and LA. Travel this country, It's there's a lot to see. A massive amount of culture in a massive amount of places in the States. And just you know thinking that you know you want to live in new york because you saw it on instagram or shit like that like okay sure that's that's a very deep thought integrating is like understanding you know you want to understand what this country is about if you want to make the move as we know traveling is a great way to do that seeing places going going to places is, is a great way to do that how often do you go back to finland i would like to spend the midsummer there every year but it has been very much impossible now because of the virus thing and everything so but in general huh? generally i would go once or twice a year yeah and how do you spend your free time when you're not working i'm gonna start doing my pilot's license next year but right now i would say working and free time for me that's a different weird con concept <laughs> you know because when I play piano, for example, I might be working and having free time in the same time. <laughs> How do you define success? Um, you, I would probably go with something hippie like more happiness per unit of time. That's not actually very bad at all, but you have to be in a place where you're satisfied roughly almost every day about what you're doing and about the people that you're doing it with or who are you doing it for, as clients or etc. You want to be financially in a place where you don't feel like you're constantly screwed over. And especially you don't want to be in, in a place where you're, you're con constantly screwed over by somebody you hate. <laughs> Once you're in that kind of space, I think you're pretty successful. If you can do something, even remotely what you love for a living, you are more than successful, you are a miracle. It's miraculous if you can do what you love for a living. It's freaking miraculous. And it's very and, rare. And it's probably, as you just said, it's rare. And I'm especially, I mean, we're both in highly saturated fields. Mm. Everybody's a photographer and pretty right. much everybody's a music, music producer. No, mm. Let's say in music almost. A lot of people are. Yeah. And so it's one of those where, and I, 
I think it's like one percent probably make a mm. living off of it mm. full time and or something mm. like that. It's ridiculously small. It is. But I think it's still. I mean, I don't want to be too, you know, pushing people down, but. I, I do think there is hopefully some optimism for kids getting into it. That's what I try to teach when I, you know, I don't, I don't teach much, but when I, when I, when I give classes and when I, if if there's any influence that I can have on younger people, I would say, um, and I think they, in the back of their heads, already know this that you you gotta you gotta let go of these old structures, and I, I don't mean politically, I mean. Structures in a way that, you know, you're supposed to do certain things. There's this status quo that's telling you, those people that are telling you, older people mainly, old, older guys already established in the business or whatever, telling you that there's a certain way to do things. And that's 120,000% absolute crap. Sorry to say. There is no way. There's always your special way that you will craft for yourself in every, every situation. That can include formal training. I have nothing against that. I'm actually all for it. Like people should get formal training in everything, especially if they have the time and the, especially if they have uh, the curiosity for that particular method of training. But but don't get stuck on that either. Like it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter what is your way of you know starting your career or starting your. Uh, you know, whatever you want to take as a path towards, you know, building your success or your future. Just make sure that you you don't submit to these weird ass claims that some people are making just because they are established and they are, you know, they think that they know. Nobody knows. The only person who knows is you. Like, there's no other way. Do you consider yourself lucky? Extremely lucky. Miraculously lucky. I think there's a very different way of how people see success in Finland compared to America, for example. This would be a great place to drop a bunch of cliches. I don't, uh, personally, I don't, culturally I can't see a massive difference in that other than in the, you know, in the fringes, you know, obviously you have the, the extreme cultural phenomena that are you know, obviously more extreme in a bigger marketplace, like here in the States. People are trying generally all over the all over the planet, I think. They are trying to achieve something that is relatively similar when they're talking about success. How do you define failure? Uh, that is very difficult for me to define. Failure to me would be something like, I knew that I could be more conscientious and I didn't. I, I chose not to be as hardworking and do my due diligence. If I have an opportunity to work hard on something and I choose to not do it, then to me that's a failure. What makes Finnish people unique, if, if anything? First of all, geographically. When you're from Finland, you're from a very interesting place geographically. Massive border with Russia, which is like the border of the West pretty much. The history that goes along with that, not even so much the wars and all that, but but even, you know, up until the 80s and, you know, when we had these very interesting political dynamics and how those shaped what Finland became. And being from there and having seen that very up and close, you know, the Cold War, that's obviously something that younger generations don't really remember it better that way, maybe. <laughs> They should know that it it did exist and what it meant, but not not necessarily in that like like that political sense. I don't think it's so important. Being close to Sweden is super important, especially in my field. It's like people confuse Finland and Sweden oftentimes, but then you're like, well, Sweden Sweden is like, if you talk about music, then Sweden is like the king, you know, and then Finland is like the king of metal, <laughs> you know what I mean? A great spot to drop a lot of cliches here as well, but I would I would go with that. The ge geography is number one, and then I would say that politically, there there's a political aspect to that, which is like we can bring, and or any Nordic could bring this to the table. They can, or we can tell people in the world how we are organized as countries, and I think there's a lot that we can. A lot of positivity in that, that we can spread. What does it mean to be Finnish to you specifically? I would probably right away expand it to being a Nordic 
person, but to be Finnish, the deep, deep love of nature. And we know Finnish nature, how beautiful it is. That type of closeness, deep unity that, that we have with nature somehow. That's, that's what being Finnish means to me, maybe the most. And in the future, when you have plan to have additions to family, hopefully one day, uh, do you think there's a Finnish traditions that have to be kept and, and is it important to keep Finnish traditions going? I will keep uh, uh, definitely the food traditions going, you know, Christmas ham, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, baking my own bread hopefully one day as well. Again, I did that before. Uh, building a sauna in the backyard, that's definitely happening. Those kinds of things. I mean, I'm not a um, I'm not a traditionalist per se, but I love those certain certain customs and certain traditions, and there's no no reason why I wouldn't keep keep practicing them. For me, Finland pops up in a lot of times in popular culture in the weirdest mm. ways. It'll yeah, just, Conan. Yeah, Conan or SNL or mm. Elon Musk is richer than all of Finland. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any? Favorite, uh, favorite moments when films popped up in, in popular culture? Conan was funny, I have to say. The Tarja Halonen, it, it was meme-like even before memes were a thing. Every once in a while there is something. I don't know popular culture. I, I follow politics very closely and, and you know, the comedian Bill Maher has mentioned Finland many times, but in a, obviously making a joke about you know, some political stuff. Um, I was actually at the airport when Conan came to Finland with a sign that said, welcome to Sweden. Oh, that's awesome. That's really awesome. <laughs> I have the photo somewhere, so I'll have to put it on the screen. Do you have an American dream? I'm leaving the American dream as far as I know what it is. American dream means social, some, uh, social mobility. So you are born or you, you you don't have much, but you work hard and you achieve a better life. That's the American dream. For a Finnish person, that's kind of like what we are used to. That's not necessarily a dream-like thing for us. It's like, well, this is kind of what you're taught in school. Like, that's what you do. You, you better yourself, you learn and you work hard and then you become the person who you want to be. And, also financially, then you might end up making more money than your parents, for example. Since you've been abroad for a while, I'm, I'm hoping you, you might have some insight on this. Finns are stereotypically not known as great marketers, especially oh, yeah. marketing their, themselves. And, 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 and um, we, we talked yesterday offline about, you know, a new band, a Finnish mm. metal band, and you had to learn about a Finnish metal band from a British yeah. guy. In America, yeah, um, and I, I just find that hilarious. And well, I, they're I, still st streaming like <laughs> hundreds of million, millions in Spotify, right? So. And and so they're I'm, doing I'm fine, wondering, but... I'm really wondering, like, what is it that we need to do, and, and what's your what's your thoughts thoughts on this? How do we become better self marketers of Finnish Finnish things? I think we should just grab on to the thing we already have going on. These people we were talking about yesterday, they they have massive, massive massive following already. So we have Finnish people already all over the place. The spread is already happening. Now we just, if we want to capitalize on it, if we want to monetize it in Finland, if we want to turn it into this, this massive snowball that Sweden did with music, we just need to take the existing structure and amplify it. That's all. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. The wheel is already rolling down, you know, Germany and the States and everywhere. Finnish Folks just, just need to basically wake up and do what Sweden did. How have you adapted into living and working in America? Because culturally we can be a bit straightforward or a little hmm. bit introverted or... Knowing that you're going to find people that are a good match for you, that's number one. You know that you will find these people anywhere on the planet. But second of all, for me, it was important to realize that I'm not going to meet many of them. I'm going to meet a handful of these people in America. So that and America is a large freaking place. That's also why for me it has been very, very important that I had been... I've almost traveled to every state. So I've been around, I've seen people, met people, talked to people. Now here in Nashville, I'm very lucky to have a circle where I've met a couple of people who are like that as well. Like this kind of stereotypical Finnish vibes where you're like, 
ultra direct, almost to the point of embarrassment sometimes. That honesty and that kind of thing, that really could be a cliche or not, whatever, but I appreciate it. I appreciate that kind of, you know, upfront mentality about everything, especially in my field. It's horrible. We talked the other day. Imagine a situation where you're working in a team or in a band and then you hold something in you like for two weeks and then you like it out like because you're too, you're too afraid to say what you what do you think. And that never leads to anything good. You have to find company where you can be direct and well, if there is a cultural difference between America and Finland, well, that's where it is. Americans do small talk, Finnish people don't. And I had to literally learn small talk when I was a teenager. I, did, I couldn't, if somebody asked me, how are you doing? I'm like, good. What I would do is I would just be very realistic that you're not going to find a lot of people who match, but you will definitely, if you look hard enough and if you're honest yourself and upfront, you're going to find people that will match that kind of mentality. And there you go, then you have a good match, you can you can make whatever happen. As an entrepreneur, what are some core things that I could do to be in your position sometime in the future? I know you personally too well to answer this. <laughs> you told me that you had a great answer from, from another person you interviewed, which was, if you have already started, then that's already like more than 99%. That's one thing I would repeat my answer to, or my, you know, follow up for that, that would be, Make sure that you finish what you start, because I come from a place where I'm a musician. We, this is like our cardinal sin. We start everything, we say yes to everything, and we only are able to finish a fraction of the things we start. That's something I would say to anyone who wants to especially be in a creative field, but also being an entrepreneur, you already are creative, no matter what the field is. Make realistic goals. Make sure that you achieve enough of them to be motivated to achieve more of them. For this last section, we are going to do a word association play. I'm going to give you 10 words and just let me know what you think about each word or what comes to mind first. And uh, then uh, we're going we're gonna to move on to uh, enjoying our night. Sure. All right. Are you ready? I am. First word, blue. Fish. White. Seagull. Sauna. Finland. Sisu. Finland. Black. Soul. Green. Forest. Coca-Cola. Sugar. The Matrix. Neon. Finland. Joy. Love. Um, the ocean. And what do you have to say to the next generation of entrepreneurs? Good luck. Ha, 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 ha.